Meanwhile, the lefty's latest equity insanity is coming after the classroom and parents are fuming. Get this, the California school district is nixing honors classes for a one-size-fits-all approach. So, sorry if your kid is gifted, really good in school and working really hard. The district says their plan will level the playing field, but parents aren't buying that. That we want to provide equal um, opportunity to all students. And a lot of people would also agree that we want to provide uh, the students um, the based on their individual need. But the, the way that this plan is, is uh, drafted, equity is, is uh, defined in terms of achieving equal outcomes. And that's seemingly at all costs by getting rid of honors. It's sickening. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott says it's time to punch back at the left's attempt to take over education. It means we finally bust up the K-12 through monopoly that lets bureaucrats and big labor bosses block our kids from their highest potential. It means parents' rights and family choices and funding students instead of systems. You know, in some districts have backed off this, guys, because they realize that the, the parents spoke up and said this is not toler tolerable. But this district is going through with it. Dana, what is the big deal? Have an honor student have it, uh, who uh, have their class, their curriculum dumbed down. Is that okay? It's absolutely not okay. And if you go back to the Glenn Youngkin campaign uh, that surprised Democrats, I think that they didn't realize how potent this issue of education is for parents across America. He was able to win over independent voters because he said at every campaign stop, I will make sure that there is advanced math offered in every high school across this state. And he would get a standing ovation for that line. So having somebody that is in your class or in your, in your in, like in, in the larger classroom mm -hmm. that is achieving something, one, you can be proud of them. And also it makes you try to be better. I think that the, we are still competitive people in, inherently. We don't want to be dumbed down. We have, there's a desire to achieve. Mm -hmm. And if there are people who don't want to achieve, that's fine. You don't have to. But to take it away from people in the name of equity is gross. Uh, the problem is, uh, Jesse, with too many Asian kids in the honors, yeah. only, they make only 10% of the student body, uh, but 34% of the honors classes. And they got to they gotta fix that. Uh, are you saying there's too many Asians that are smart? Yep. <laughs> that, well, they, they are they smart. Say, I mean, they are smart, and they're and, doing really well in school. And, I never and you felt... know why, though, because the culture there says you're doing your homework, you're going to do extra, you're going to get up early in the morning, and you're going to work out late and maybe not do sports. Right. Um, I'm not going to go down that road, Brian, but I want to, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I, I never felt when I wasn't in any advanced placement classes that I was being left out. I never felt upset about that. Did I your distin parents complain? I distinguished myself in other ways. Yeah. Like on the football field. You look like you don't believe me. I don't. The stage <laughs> manager just laughed. Right. <laughs> in oh. communist countries, they still have advanced exactly. placement. Cool. In China, in Russia... They allow for gifted or bright yeah. students to take different levels of, of coursework so they can become rocket scientists. We don't do this with artists. We don't do this with athletes. Why would we do that to our school? What if Steve Jobs had to sit in the science class with a bunch of dummies so the dummies felt better? We wouldn't have a computer, and right. we'd still be on typewriters, right. and, and our the, fingers and would the be falling Chinese off. would have nothing to steal. So it would be unbelievable. That's a good point. You're making yeah. a lot of broad stereotypes. <laughs> like that. Yeah, you do like that. So I'll be a mediaite instead of you. Uh, so, Judge, this to me gets to the foundation what makes America great. We compete. We don't win all the time. But we want to compete with each other. And then you put steel together and it makes something special. What they're doing is they're taking away the opportunity from students who are capable of advanced study. And if you look at it that way, you realize that they're looking for this equity, this equality of opportunity and outcome. I don't know what that means. You know, my grandson, okay, he, he can do A, B, C through Z, and he's 18 months old, okay? My son didn't talk until he was three. I mean, you take advantage of one and you say, this kid is linguistic, Absolutely. and let's, let's use that as a trend or an opportunity to teach him more. OK, I mean, it just is a question of some people slow down the pace. Some people, if they're too smart, you, you, you bore them and they end up not competing and challenging themselves. And for kids who are right. too slow, if the course is too fast for them, then they become truants and they drop out. It's just not a good thing. They tried it in New York and they tried yeah. it in San Diego and it didn't work. And, and they now they want to try it in 
Culver City in California. Pierce, I'm sure you know that we simplified the rundown because we knew who we were dealing with because we want to have equal <laughs> outcomes. I'm only kidding. This one kid, uh, this one, uh, this honor student's parent said, my kid is now in an, with everybody else, and she's getting an A++ in English. She doesn't want that. Oh, she complete, wants a harder class. It's complete nonsense. And like all the attempts that the woke brigade make to make things supposedly fairer and more equal, what it actually creates is a new unfairness, so the bright kids get punished. Now, I remember the, the rot started actually in England. I'll take the rap for this, of this mentality. When egg and spoon races were banned at a school in Scarborough in uh, the north of England... And they changed it to egg balancing because they got too competitive. Kids mm. were trying to be too good at running with their egg and wow. spoon. So it became egg balancing event in which they raced against a clock, not against each other. And the kids could opt out altogether if they wanted, even if their parents wanted them to compete. compete. They were allowed to say to their parents, no. This is what happened in my country, right? And this is the way your edge. I see. What you lose, when you lose the competitive edge, when you think competition is the enemy, when you start to value mediocrity over achievement and success, you end up in this ridiculous position. And they call themselves equity warriors. It is a war, actually. And if America wants to get back to being Absolutely. number one in all the metrics uh, educationally, where China dominates and Asia dominates, then it's got to start celebrating success. We know we've got to a place now. I was laughing about it last night with someone. You see on Instagram people, and they say, I'm so proud of myself. I just passed my driving test at the seventh attempt. I'm so proud. I'm like, why would you even post that? I don't know. What are you proud of? Right. You're one of the worst drivers in history, and you're now telling us you failed six times. Suck it up quietly and get in your car and try not to kill people. But that's the mentality. <laughs> we celebrate that. That would have got liked a million times. Good on you, proud. That's the problem. Yeah, right. Egg yeah. and spoon races and celebrating your seventh attempt at passing a driving you test. You go out every night, am I right? I, I like to. It's unbelievable. 23 <laughs> schools in Illinois, 23 <laughs> schools in Baltimore. Uh, they have zero kids proficient, proficient in math, math and, and reading. All right. I know, it's did just... you know, so we, we did a story about, on Newsroom about that today, and the Chicago Public Schools gave us a statement that said, well, we are right in line with all the other big city schools. Like, that's <laughs> really, like, actually not right, something to brag about, guys. Remember musical chairs? They would pull one chair away, one kid would be crying, they'd hit the ground, no chair, you lost. Let's do we that We were a right tougher here. generation. Let's do it right, right here. Let's go. Yeah. I, 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 they, they tied us to the chair. Uh, that's uh, uh, yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.